Hey guys, it's Katrina Alaska's Hurricane here with another video of working on the cabin. So yesterday we log peeled a whole bunch of logs. So that way we can start getting the other wall over there started. We still only have half of a wall there, a couple of logs there, a log there. And yeah, today we're just putting up a wall. Let's hop to. Okay, so. Found some nails. Okay, so we noticed that one of the walls, the pillars are starting to lean out a little bit. So our solution is to put one of the two by sixes on top that'll be something to help make sure that they don't bend the wrong way and that way our measurements are more accurate here i realized in order to put the support up i would need a ladder which we did not have and i grabbed the wrong length of support so I go back and I get the right length and I start bringing it over and putting it up. I wanted to knock the snow off so that way there wasn't snow underneath the support, potentially causing a little bit of issues. And then with not having a ladder, I'm kind of looking around trying to see where is something that I can use. This is the part that I enjoy because I get to use my mind and see what I can use when I don't have something. And here walking towards the camera, I wound up finding a hole. Important tool, drill. Let's go. We need to build a ladder soon. And now that I remembered that we had a small round cut that we were using as a hammer earlier, I realized, okay, that's cut flat enough to where I can use it as a little bit of a stool. Of course, it's not the safest thing to do, but I have confidence in my balance capabilities. And sometimes you just gotta use what you have when you don't have what you need. And figuring out problems like these is how you get smarter. It's a really important life skill to have and nature provides. It's definitely not OSHA approved. The building process is changing and actively adapting as we are noticing certain problems and figuring out ways to fix them because this both is and is not an exact science. And those aren't moving. Let me take my now that the support is up so that way those beams will not start leaning out and we will get more accurate measurements and lengths for being able to wedge the walls and not have a gap on the sides that we need to chink. We will also be fixing the other wall here soon. Once we did notice the leaning, we did come up with a solution to where that does not happen again and it will get fixed. And as I have said, this is a project that is actively changing as certain problems come up and are noticed. We come up with solutions that fix those and make sure that doesn't happen again. It is nice to see the progress that we are making on the walls, as well as learning how to build a cabin 
is a very amazing skill that I enjoy doing and learning and just being out in nature. And this skill is going to be really useful. And I know there are so many different ways to build cabins and endless more that haven't been done yet or tried or anything like that. And so to be able to have an idea in your mind and to be able to draw it out, figure out what you need to do in order to make it happen and start turning that vision, that idea into reality, into something physically that you can see and interact with. It's a very amazing thing and it feels very powerful to know that I am going to be able to build a cabin and that I have built a cabin by the end of this. All that being said, I have noticed a lot of people are commenting on how we have done the foundation, saying that it isn't strong enough and needs more support. We are aware that more support will be needed in the future. For right now, it is doing what we need it to do. And in the future, once the snow and the ice melts from underneath the cabin, we will be able to add a main support in the center, as well as a couple more supports around the sides, so that way it is fully sturdy. And for right now, it is pretty hard to do that in the winter time. The fact that we have gotten this far speaks volumes about how hard we are willing to work to make this happen. And, I mean, the snow is still like four or five feet deep. If we walk off of the trail without snowshoes, we still sink up to our hips. And so, shoveling out that much snow, even just in a 12 by 12 area, kind of sucks. And now the ice underneath, or the snow that has melted and then refroze into ice, is going to be extremely solid and very hard to chip through. So if we wait until it melts in the spring, it will be a lot better for being able to get an accurate measurement to be able to put those extra supports in. We do also have log screws that we will be putting in for the walls. For right now, we are simply getting them secured, and then we will go back in and get them fully sturdy and locked in there. There are also future projects and add-ons that once we're done with the main cabin, we will be adding in a deck that also doubles as a greenhouse. And right now we are just needing to get the main cabin up and make it to where we can move in and live in it. And it is a work in progress. So bear with us throughout this. And I hope you guys do enjoy watching how a cabin is built. In the future, I will be putting a start to finish video together that shows what the forest looked like before, how it looked during, as well as talking about a lot of the progress and just the project in general, what we wound up learning, a little bit of the do's and don'ts, and hopefully it can inspire some people to be like, huh, okay, well, if they're doing this, you know what? I might be able to do that too. I might actually be able to do what I've been wanting to do for a while, and 
it is completely doable and there are so many resources out there to learn and figure out how to build your cabin the do's and the don'ts um being able to learn from other people's mistakes as well as being able to refine that process and put your own little twist on it to make it just your own and a type of cabin that isn't anywhere else out there. And you know, in today's economy, with how much it costs to buy a house or even rent out an apartment, if you have the drive as well as the determination you will be able to gain the skills and the knowledge required to go and buy a property and be able to slowly start getting your bills down to allow being able to build on that property and once you're able to live on that property your bills are going to go way down and especially here in Alaska it's the new way of living and living where it's affordable and I found nine times out of ten the people who are living off grid tend to kind of know what's up they're living off grid for a reason either they grew up that way and see how the rest of the world is and they choose to still live that way or it's people who have seen how the world is and they're like, no, 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 that's not right. I'm going to go over here where this is better and I'm going to be able to actually live and be a lot happier. I mean, if you're working a nine to five and you're happy with that, okay, great. But there's a lot of people out there who are just meandering through life and just working the nine to five because that's just what everybody does. And so it's what they are doing. And for me personally, it's a way to be able to retire early. I mean, yeah, I'll still be grabbing firewood and probably hauling water and stuff like that, but to me, that's not work. That's fun. That's actually living. That's doing something that is productive and is really good for my mental state and my state of being instead of going and like sitting at a desk and it's doing something for myself that is going to be a return instead of going and working for someone else to where they benefit more than what I do and I'm just sitting there living paycheck to paycheck just kind of struggling through and just how the vast majority of society is, which I don't believe that's the way things should be. Now, being able to do this, there is a decent amount of time and energy and money that goes into it, but at the same time, we are getting that return. Even though it's more work now, it's going to make the future easier, which is well worth it. And this process, at the very least for me, is very good for the mind, the body, and the soul. And this is where I can find my peace. When I am just in like a small town or more so out in the woods, I can quiet my mind and be able to actually think and have peace and ease of mind. Whereas when I am in the city, 
there's all this noise around me, all these people, all these different energies that kind of meld together and create all this noise in my head that just completely goes away whenever I am out in nature. And that is my happy place. That is my calling. It's where I want to go. It's where I need to be. And it's where I am at my happiest and most peaceful. And I also really love and enjoy the process of building and problem solving, being able to figure out what does work and what doesn't work. Even when a problem pops up that makes you just kind of stand there with your hands on your hips, head tilted slightly to the side, thinking, well, what the crap happened there? Why is that like that? Crap, we don't have enough materials for this, or, ah, oh, dang it, we forgot this other thing. Even when that happens, I still am standing there smiling because now I get to turn my brain on and problem solve and figure out, okay, well, that's the problem. What's going to be the solution? And how many solutions can I think of? Well, okay, this could solve the problem, but that still leaves this other thing. Or this other solution to the problem is a lot better and going to work for longer and not cause this other problem or something. It is also only my second winter here in Alaska. My last winter, the lowest temperature I experienced was 6 degrees Fahrenheit, and the snow didn't really get above my knees and so this year being able to experience negative 30 degrees Fahrenheit as well as snow up to my hips I am absolutely in love with it some might call me a little crazy for enjoying the cold and those extreme temperatures but being able to experience them and have just stories to be able to share with people, to have different experiences, to say, yeah, I've experienced that temperature. I've been in that. I was outside working most of the day when it was that cold. That is an accomplishment for me. And I've always loved the snow and I enjoy it so much. I mean, yeah, it's nice in the summertime when you don't have to wear snowshoes all the time and you're not wearing everything in your wardrobe every day in order to stay warm. It is a very interesting experience that a lot of people kind of complain about the cold or the snow. And I can understand when you need to shovel your driveway or you're on a road that doesn't get plowed or something like that. But even that challenge and being able to do that... I enjoy doing stuff like that. It gives me a sense of satisfaction and fulfillment that I think a lot of people in society have kind of lost. Because in today's society, we are taught to have someone else think for us and in a way kind of take care of us, but we have lost a lot of the skills to be able to take care of and provide for ourselves 
but the people who have realized that or are not okay with that in their society or stay live where they can provide for themselves and have the survival skills necessary, they know what's going on and they have similar minds to me of enjoying that lifestyle and preferring it over being in society and working a job that you might enjoy, you might not enjoy it, but me, I enjoy nature more than being in a big city or an apartment or even a house on your own that's like kind of out of society, kind of not. I find I have more peace the further I am away from society and the more I am on my own and able to just be myself without worrying about someone coming in and having their own opinions or their own judgment over what I'm doing. I mean, yeah, I will go out and seek knowledge that I need, but there's a lot of heavily opinionated people that are not me that don't fully know the situation or what's going on in my mind, that are going to try to say something about what I'm doing And my personal viewpoint on that is if you don't like something, just don't be around it. Why do you need to spend your time and energy on saying how you don't like this or you don't like that or you don't approve of this or that or this other thing? And just be like, you know what? You do you. I don't really like what you're doing. I mean, it's not hurting anybody else, so I'm just going to go over here and do my own thing and figure out what I do enjoy being around instead of being around something that I'm going to whine and complain about all the time. Because complaining gets you nowhere. If you're whining about something, do something to fix that to where you can put your time and energy elsewhere. Alright, so we went and bought some logs for the log cabin and have cut them down to size. That is a full cord of wall logs for our cabin right there and we need to currently unload them from there and walk them down to the cabin, put them in a pile, and we'll be log peeling those here soon and getting them up on the cabin in the next few days. This was the same day that you guys just watched and that we put the wall up, and so We are a little tired. We bought these logs, measured all of them out, carried them over to the Suburban, and packed them pretty tight into the Suburban. And this is a cord of wall logs, and it is pretty much the rest of what we need for the cabin. So I am very stoked and excited A lot of these have most of the bark already peeled off of them, and it's also pretty easy peeling. These are also slightly lighter than the ones that we were getting off of the property, and so it's a little bit easier to carry them over. But the trail was getting super slick and slippery. So I had to be extremely careful when carrying these because falling with a log is not exactly my definition of fun. And so having already moved these once, now touching them again and moving them 
a second time. And then we still have to log peel them. That's moving them a third time. It's not the easiest. It may not always be the funnest, but it's fun to me. And I definitely get entertainment out of it. So hopefully you guys do too. So I had a decent amount of people saying that the music was a little annoying. And a couple of others who said that they enjoyed the sounds of nature and building in the background. So I have switched my editing style to more so be voiceovers and having the building noises in the background. And I also found the thunk of the logs to be extremely satisfying, so I wound up leaving them in. It did take us only 20 minutes to get the Suburban unloaded and all of the logs over in a pile. And I am super proud of how fast we were able to do that and how I'm able to lift these logs and walk with them. It just makes me extremely happy to be able to do all of this and see the progress as well as knowing what the future brings and the knowledge that I am obtaining and skills that I am gaining as well as strength and mental fortitude that has real value to it that is what they don't teach you in school and that is stuff that i'm going to use a lot in the future and it is going to help me get to my end goal that being said, let me know what you guys want to see more of. We have stopped recording a lot of the log peeling because we know there was a lot of that and we don't want stuff to get too repetitive. But if it's a part of the process that you guys enjoy seeing, let us know. Cabin in a pile, anyone? So this is pretty much... The rest of the logs that we need for building the walls of a cabin. So I'm happy, not fully looking forward to log peeling these, but I'm looking forward to getting the cabin done. So.